What's up everybody, this is CJ Tarver here with another great episode of Marvelous Mumbles. Today we'll be talking about the amazing movie Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, which just released recently, June 5th, in theaters. I went and saw it a week after it released, and it was incredible. It's The story is absolutely complex, the characters are well drawn and thought out, and all the elements of the film just really tied together wonderfully for this movie. So today we're going to be talking about characters, plots, animation, and whatever else might come to mind. So first let's discuss characters. There were many fantastic and amazing characters all throughout this movie across the Spider-Verse. But some of them really stood out and really helped compel the story and helped you get entranced and, and roped into the story and the complexity of the multiverse uh, and story arc. So the first character that did that very well is, of course, Miles Morales, who is the main character of the story and is the Spider-Man of the Earth that the Ultimate Spider-Man died in in 2011. And now in the movie, he is the Spider-Man of that Earth when Spider-Man died because of Kingpin in the first Spider-Man movie. So, of course, Miles, as the main character, has a lot of the story elements to himself. And that really helps drive him as a character and really helps show some of the things that he goes through and show his family, uh, his powers, and how he's evolving as a hero. Uh, still a young one at that. The second character that absolutely helped drive the story and made it excellent was Spider-Gwen. Spider-Gwen is also known as Ghost Spider or Spider-Woman to her universe. And she has been seen in multiple different things, mostly as Gwen Stacy, though. And Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse was the first time we actually got Spider-Gwen in a movie. Now, Spider-Gwen has a lot of good history herself. And I like that the fact that Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse kind of touched on this history that Spider-Gwen has more. The next hero that uh, helped drive the story was... Spider-Man 2099. Now this guy is like a Batman Spider-Man. Very hardcore, thinks everything's dark, things like that. And it really helps the story when you get this bad guy like Spider-Man whose morals are compelled to do the right thing but at any means necessary. So that helped drive the story. Miguel O'Hara, also known as Spider Man 2099, who first appeared in 1999 in the comic book Spider Man 2099, which was created in correlation with uh, Marvel's Spider the 2099 universe and was a successful line and has been can be continued ever since. This is the first time Miguel actually appeared in the film and not probably going to be the last. A Spider-Man 2099 film would actually be quite fantastic, but I don't know how much Marvel actually wants to touch on the 2099 universe. Uh, the 2099 X-Men are also contenders, but they were not in this film. It was just about Spider-Man, and Spider-Man 2099 definitely carried the weight of the entire 2099 universe with him in this story. Next Spider-Man to bring up is Spider-Punk, who is Hobie Brown, a Spider-Man from a universe where everything is corrupt, and he is the one who fixes all that corruptness in his world. Hobie Brown has his own uh, Spider-Punk series, and it is absolutely fantastic. He is another really great Spider-Man with a complex story, a uh, very funny, uh, good background, and helps show light in a bunch of darkness in a time where rebellion would be hated upon. So Spider-Punk does really well at this in the film too, showing his character of who he is and where he came from. Uh, they did very well with that. And I feel like the Spider-Punk character is kind of what helps, you know, drive the... Uh, rebellion that Miles has because he's like inspired and independent now because of what he's seen Spider-Punk do and this rebellious spirit comes into Miles from Spider-Punk so Spider-Punk definitely helps drive the series and he is still an incredible spider no matter what he does the next spider to bring up is uh, ben Riley, Scarlet Spider, who was originally seen in a comic book 
in the early 1990s, I believe. Uh, he was a clone of Peter Parker, who was created by the Jackal and was supposed to replace Spider-Man as a bad guy Spider-Man. Uh, but then he became a good guy, and Spider-Man got his identity back as Peter Parker, and Ben Riley was now just left by himself. He named himself Ben Riley after after uh, Uncle Ben, and Riley just was a great last name that he wanted, so that's why he did that. Um, and so he was kind of just lost. He was a Spider-Man, of course, but he didn't have any powers or I mean, he had powers, but he didn't have anywhere to go. He didn't have anything to do. He didn't have a purpose. So he kind of just was like a side Spider-Man at the time um, until he found his own suit and his own cache of villains and his own way of doing spider work. And once he found that, he found exactly how he wanted to live and has been doing well at that ever since. And Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse really did well in bringing him into the world and how uh, dramatic his world is and how he struggles with what he's going through. Um, and I think Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse definitely did well with showing him and bringing him into this. The next hero to talk about is one called Spider-Bite. She is a sp she is a spider woman from Earth who is a child genius and operates her spider suit through virtual reality. She first appeared in I think a 2015 comic and has been part of the MC the Marvel comic universe for ever since then. She's appeared in multiple Spider-Verse issues and even had her own limited series I think for some bit of time called Spider Bites. And so, yeah, she's a pretty cool hero. Um, in the movie, they show her as, like, Miguel's technology person, assistant spider. Um, and then, in the end, she actually ends up helping Miles escape and get back home. So, it really shows how, how Spider-Man's work to help the betterment of humanity and how Spider-Bite is another one of these spiders that does this really well and helps people, even her fellow spiders, uh, do things that might be a little bit questionable, but also that she thinks is right. Uh, so helping Miguel find spiders and all this stuff, she thought that was right. And when it came to Miles escaping and getting home, uh, she thought that was right, so that's what she helped with. And that really showed throughout the uh, film when she helped him and was talking about how she assisted Miguel uh, on her own. So next we'll be talking about the plot in Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. The, the story begins with a pre-intro in Gwen's universe showing her story and how she became Spider-Gwen and how she has struggled with the death of her friend Peter Parker in her universe and how that has put her at tension and ties against her father. Also in this beginning intro they also showed when Miguel came and Miguel uh, stopped the bad guy that had came from a different universe into Gwen's and Spider-Gwen was almost arrested by her father um, even though she did reveal to him her identity uh, but she was almost arrested but then Miguel gave her a membership into his society of Spider-Man and now Gwen travels the multiverse as a multiversal hero uh, recruiting Spider-Mans and saving Spider-Mans all across the multiverse so this was a amazing element that they put only in the beginning of the film. The the um the the story that they then continued with helped build upon this intro when they then showed Miles in his world how he's doing there, how he knows he's not alone, um how he's a little bummed that he hasn't had a visit from any of his uh friends or anything yet. So that was a great element that they put into the film. And so then they go into, after Miles does see Gwen again, they go into uh, the fact that she's there to see Spot, but Miles does not know that. Uh, I really like the fact that they show Gwen kind of having an agenda in this movie. The first one, she was there to help Miles. She was there to assist him um, and help him in his journey. And in the second one, it was more about what Gwen needs, what Gwen wants, and how she's going to help 
build her story, Miguel's life, how to save the universes. She's not really thinking fully about Miles, which I think was a great element because you can't only think about one person. You have to think about society as a whole. And that's a really great element that they put in there and made tension really high between the Spider-Verse and helped set up this Miles solo act that he then had uh, after he found out that she was just having her own agenda. So that is most of the plot. And then we go into the fact that Miles' dad is the captain and one of the canon events in the world is cap the police captain dying and so that's kind of where the story really picks up and builds upon because miles doesn't want that to happen and yet all the spider-men say that's supposed to happen and that he can't change that and miles doesn't do that he wants to do his own thing as he said in the film and so that's where really the tension between him miguel and the other spider-men's come from and so it's Miles against the multiverse, which is a brilliant concept that I really love that they put into the movie um, and showed how the Spider-Mans are the good guys, but not always the best good guys out of all. This was, uh, once again, this was a very complex story, a very complex world, and I think they did very well of flowing it all together into the perfect story that was absolutely incredible it wielded perfect results another amazing aspect of the film was the aspect of canon events events that have shaped spider-man and spider-woman all across the multiverse that are supposed to be things that have to happen to create spider-man and women now these canon events they're kind of like supposed to be like have to happen but there are a lot of spider people who these things don't happen for and so it's really kind of interesting how Miguel really thinks that these things have to happen when he's kind of a hypocrite because those things didn't happen for him in his story Spider-Man 2099 and it didn't happen for uh, other spider people like Superior Spider-Man um, and people like that. Superior Spider-Man is actually kind of Peter Parker Spider-Man so you know that kind of might cancel that out but for other spider people I don't think that uh, these canon events really do matter and maybe it has destroyed universes in other places and Miguel's had to fix them and maybe he's tired of it and that's why he's doing this now with intensity for miles but um it'll be interesting to see how they lay out the fact that these canon events are necessary to uh, exist as a spider-man when there are many other spider people who have not participated with these events Another very important aspect to the story was the evolution of the different characters that they had. Like Gwen. Gwen, at first in the first movie, was kind of still still the only Spider-Woman. Still kind of nervous or whatever and still kind of young and immature. And was able to kind of grow out of that and gain friends and stuff in into the Spider-Verse. And then across the Spider-Verse kind of showed how she has friends, but she really doesn't need them because she's comfortable as herself and, and knows that she's not the only Spider-Woman and has purpose now as a Spider-Verse world protector. Another great character evolution was Peter B. as he's grown as a not just Spider-Man, but as a responsible parent and as a responsible mentor to Miles, trying to help him make the right decisions and things like that. Another great evolution was of Penny Parker, who had a very small appearance in Across the Spider-Verse, but very significant one indeed when she, it shows her with her new mech that is more of the original classic mech from the Penny Parker comic books, uh, SP, SPDR. Um, so seeing the classic robot and also seeing how hard she looked and how sad she was by her knowing that these canon events are necessary and how upsetting hers was but how necessary it had to be. Uh, so the evolution of these characters has helped really shape the story in Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse and helped drive the tension between the Spider-People and this was like 
kind of a side element to all the other ones, uh, in co in according to the canon events and things like that, that the canon events help evolve these characters into what they are and what they will be. Um, but we also should know that the canon events don't necessarily have to happen uh, to evolve the characters and things like that. So I hope Beyond the Spider-Verse, which is the second part to Across the Spider-Verse, really touches on this aspect of heroes can evolve beyond the canon events to become who they need to be.